Hey everyone, it's Grant Thomas from Visas Association bringing to you another Q&A session. Uh, this time the question is, what happens if my Schengen visa application is rejected or denied? Uh, now this is not crazily common, uh, but it's kind of more common in people who have tried to understand the requirements themselves, tried to reassess their personal situation uh, and try and figure out sort of what they need or even people who just tried to rush what they were trying to do just to try and get it through uh, quick as possible. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually link to a video that walks through the top reasons why uh, Schengen visa might be rejected or denied, uh, just so you can go and watch that and have a little bit of insight into why uh, these situations might have happened. Um, but imagine if they do happen, what do you do? So I'll break this down into a few key parts, but towards the end of the video, I'll actually give you a bit of an appeals letter that you might be able to apply in your situation when you're writing an appeal or a, a request for review to the embassy slash consulate that has refused you entry. So before we jump into this, uh, just know that there are a couple of reasons why uh, a Schengen visa application has been refused. And in order for you to appeal, you must know why, right? You can't just uh, have a rejection and then just go back and say, hey, I did not like the reason. Uh, you must evaluate and reassess why that happened. Uh, it almost never happens where you just write a letter and appeal it and then they say, oh yeah, you were right. Here is your Schengen visa. It is usually because you're missing a document, something was fraudulent, such as like a, you booked a dummy flight or a fake flight. Um, or you had not provided something in, you know, that's highly important in there as well, or even a certification on a document was incorrect. So again, uh, there are many, many reasons as to why it might have been refused in the first place. But the first step in actually appealing for the overturning on a Schengen visa application is knowing why it was rejected. Uh, unfortunate to say that a lot of consulates and embassies don't come out and tell you exactly why uh, it was rejected or refused. It's kind of up to you to go and understand why uh, something was missing or why it was assessed that you weren't an appropriate candidate to get into the Schengen region. So step number one is try and figure out why. Go back to your requirements and see what document you could be missing. Uh, go back into all of the important documents like your passport, your birth certificate, uh, and all those documents that you have provided photocopies of and make sure that you have provided valid documents for all of them or as well as a notarized slash certified copy. Uh, again, a refusal could be as little as you missed certifications on your passport. It sounds silly, but it is the fact. So what do you do? Well, the second step that you do is you under, after you understand why the, the rejection or the refusal came through, you want to go back and uh, adapt or change or add the new items that you're missing in. So for example, if you provided a, a photocopy of your passport and you only included the page with your photo on it, uh, the requirements actually say that you need to provide all pages with stamps as well as all previous visas. And so if you're missing that, what you would do is you go back to your passport, take photocopies of every single page as well as previous visas, get them certified uh, at a lawyer or a government ath approved authority, and then include them into your appeal. Uh, now, it might just not be one thing. So review everything. It could be your passport it could, as well as your flights, as well as your itinerary not having enough information. This is your chance to ref fill the bucket of everything that you need to go and send to them or reapply. Uh, so don't just find one potential issue and, and solve that or fix that. Try and find everything uh, and try and ref rectify that. And a really good rule of thumb is if you in your mind think that, hey, maybe I should refresh that or redo that, do it right? Uh, go and get new documents, go and get new utility bills, go and get new things, right? Because the, the application process might have taken two to four to six weeks. Uh, and so some of your documents might be out of date. So when you go, get into step three, uh, just be sure to include everything uh, that you've done as well. So if there has been a month that's passed and you've got new bank statements, new pay slips, new everything, uh, include them as well in it. So the next one is the final step, which is actually creating the appeal. 
So when we do this, uh, we actually walk through uh, similar to like the cover letter, right? Which is a letter from yourself to the embassy asking them to overturn the decision that they have made uh, around refusing or rejecting your Schengen visa application. And there are a couple of key elements that we want to include in this letter. The first one is obviously your personal details. Who are you? Where do you live? What's your contact information? But also who are you addressing? So uh, if you're applying to the uh, Manila-based Italian consulate, right? You want to address that embassy. You want to address that consulate and put their address, their contact details, etc., at the top. You also want to make sure that you date it um, as well as all of the other information that's relevant to it. So that's kind of just the, the crux of it. Uh, the second thing that you want to do was, is include the date that you were informed about your refusal or your, your rejection uh, because this just shows that you've got a timeline of everything that you've done. So it's almost like, hey, um, to these people, this is what I've got. Uh, and the, re the date that I was refused was at this date. And then you insert sort of that bullet point three, the reasons why you believe that you were refused or rejected. Uh, so this could be, hey, I noticed that uh, my passport was missing pages. I noticed that the flights I was missing. And I also noticed that uh, I've got some new utility bills and some new pay slips that I need to include. So then uh, with that, you also want to try and provide a reason as to why they were missed, why they were wrong. Uh, so uh, sometimes you want to go a little bit deeper into this. It's not as simple as saying, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, usually try and provide a, a real valid, reasonable reason. Uh, usually it was a confusion. Sorry, uh, there was some conflicting information that I saw around that I need this and I didn't need this and I, I didn't recognize it and I went and got some professional help, which is what visas association really helps most people with um, and you'll be able to jump onto there and again sort of watch that video around uh, the main reasons why people get refused and that should help you understand a couple of the reasons why um, then detail a little bit more around um, why you believe that it should be overturned and with this information you want to provide the value the valid documents or the new documents that you're including in your application right so in here you want to say hey i believe that it was overturned because of this uh here 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 and here uh the reason for that is because of x y and z uh and what i've done to rectify that is i've actually gone and got my whole passport completed uh which you can see attached i've also uh, gone and got utility bills which are certified and they're attached um, and kind of outlining all of them again and then putting down the bottom a, a, a sincere apology outlining that, hey, this was the first time you did it or um, if it was the second or third time to say, I think, uh, see if the rules have changed since your previous one, etc. But just be open and honest. That's all they care about is your honesty and transparency. Uh, these people are not coming into work every single day saying, I can't wait to make you not get a Schengen visa. But it's, basically their approach is, Everyone's approved until proven that they're not. It's kind of the same as in criminal law, right? You are innocent until proven guilty. In here, you're approved until proven that you're rejected, right? They don't just start off with everyone as, hey, you're rejected until you prove that we should give it to you, right? So uh, again, be honest, be sincere. Don't be aggressive. Don't try and get payback and say, hey, this is confusing. This is crazy. This is this, this is that, um, because it's just not going to help. These people, again, they... They deal with over 14 million applicants every single year. Uh, they ha have to deal with a lot of documents, a lot of uh, misplaced and unorganized information. Uh, your job is to make it as easy as possible for them because when they review it, they just sit there and say, this just makes sense. And then at the end, you just wanna make sure you sign the document and put your full name uh, behind it again. That's just a way to signify to them that you are taking this highly seriously. So. If you want to look at uh, how this whole thing works end to end, or if you want any more information, feel free to comment any more questions below and we'll be more than happy to help out. But if you found this video highly valuable to yourself, click that like button below because it helps get the message of this video out to other people who are in the similar situation to yourself where you don't know what the next step is for yourselves to take. And so hitting that like button helps them see the information themselves as well as clicking the subscribe button. The subscribe button will actually help you get information as the Schengen visa requirements are updated and changed regularly. So for example, once they do an update or a change to a requirement, 
we'll go and create a new video and you'll go and get notification on it. So if you're midway through an application and a change is implemented, uh, you'll be able to tweak the documents or update what you're doing to factor that in. And again, what I'll do is I will link to a couple of videos around me just so you can get a little bit more information and dive a bit deeper into your Schengen visa application. And we are here to solve and help your problems every step of the way. So hopefully this has helped and good luck with your application.